Hi guys, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, guys. This good is uh, morning. good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see. Uh, not really see, but great to have you guys in the session. This is our first class. Uh, till now, you were studying probability, and uh, Professor Madhupan Sharma was leading the lectures. For the rest of the semester, I'll be teaching you guys statistics and information theory. So the second half of the course is about statistics and information theory. Uh, but be before we start, and I'm just curious to know how many of you are looking forward to coming back on the campus. Okay, I can see a lot of hand raises. I can't really count that. So let me just do a quick poll. Are you able to see the poll? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Oh, there is only one no. Wow, this is awesome. Great, great, great. Super, super great. Happy to see that most of you are planning to come to campus. There is only one student who has said no so far and three who have said not yet decided. Closing the poll now. Okay. So are you let me see if I can show you the are you able to see the result on your screen or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, um, one second, there's some people in the meeting room, I... Okay, please, please be on time. Uh, I'll let you in right now, but I'm closing the meeting room now. If people join now, they'll not be able to enter. Okay, so, so let's start. Um, if you have a question or something, then please uh, raise your hand and speak. I am not able to see the chat. Okay, are you able to see the screen? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, so we are we're going to do two topics. One is statistics, and the other topic is information theory. So, uh, for statistics, the book that we will be following is. Um, called Introductory Statistics. Uh, by Sheldon Ross. Um, I'll be following the third edition 
but even if you have the second edition, that that's also fine. Uh, information theory, we will be following the book called Elements of Information Theory. By Thomas and Cover. The two authors. Uh, I'll be following the second edition for this. And second edition is quite old. I think second edition itself is about 10 years old. So you should be able to get it without much difficulty. Okay. So these are two topics that we will be covering. Uh, so we, we will start with the, with the topic called distributions of sampling statistics. This is chapter seven of the textbook. So by textbook, I mean, in this case, introductory statistics. So uh, the first six, six chapters are a lot to do with probability theory. I believe we have already, you already know random variables, you already know continuous random variables, discrete random variables, normal distribution. And I think you have also done uh, Chebyshev's inequality, Markov's inequality, weak law of large numbers and strong law of large numbers. So uh, in the first one or two lectures, there might be some repetition, I'm not sure, but uh, the rest of it should, should definitely be quite different. But you definitely need to know random variables. So even today, the examples that we will look at, uh, you will need to know uh, what is a random variable, what is the probability distribution, how do you compute the expectation, how do you compute the variance. So these topics you you really need to uh, revise if you have if you have forgotten it. Uh, okay, so let's let's start with an example. Let's say you have a roulette table. Anybody knows how many slots are there in a roulette table? Nobody has been to last paper. How many? There are 38 slots. So it starts with zero. Then there is zero zero, and then from one to thirty six. And let's say you bet one dollar on a number. Uh, so what what is the how much do you lose and how much do you win? So if you lose, you lose one dollar. So what you lose is one dollar, and what is the probability of a loss? And if you win, how much do you win? And what is the probability of this? The loss is obvious. You put $1 in. Uh, if your number doesn't come in, then you lose $1. What is the probability of you losing? 37 by 38. Yes. So if you are uh, choosing one number and that number is not coming out of 38 numbers, there are 37 which are unfavorable to you. So the probability of losing is 37 by 38. What do you win? Anybody knows? If suppose your number comes, then how much do you win? $10. No, you win $37. No, it's not 37. That would have been great. So casinos are not, uh, they don't believe in fairness, to put it this way. You have seen that movie called uh, Potions. How much was it? I think 11 was the first one. There's a very popular dialogue by Danny Ocean that the house always wins. So they don't give you $37. When you win, they don't give you $37. They give you $35. And the probability of winning is obviously 1 by 38. So the reason I say it's not fair. So what do you mean by fairness? So fairness means in the context of probability and in the context of gambling, yeah, Achyut, if you have to say something, then say it. So, now, fairness means that expected value of win is zero, or loss is zero. So, in this case, what is the expected, what is the expected gain? In this example, what is the expected gain? Uh, 
minus 2 by 38. Yes, exactly. So it is minus 1 multiplied with 37 by 38 plus 35 multiplied with 1 by 38. And this comes out to be minus 2 by 38. So we would have said that it is a it is a fair place. It is fair if this value was equal to 0. But this is not equal to 0. So this is actually equal to minus 5.3 cents. So what it means is that on an average, you are going to lose uh, a little more than 5 cents every time you are placing a bet of $1. So if the if the winning amount was if suppose this was 37, then this would have been 37, and this would have been zero. So if it were a, a fair place, then they would have given you 37 dollars on the win, and then it would have been minus one into 37 by 38 plus 37 times one by 38, which would have been zero. That would have been a Fair game, but it's it's not a fair place. Uh, so on an average, the expected gain on the on the bet is minus five point three cents. And what we are going to see one of the exercises that we will do later in the course is what is the so in this example you saw that the probability of winning is one by thirty eight. It's a small number. It's about uh, two and a half percent, little more than that. But what we will see is that. What happens if you play repeatedly? Let's say you place one bet, you lose or you win, that's fine. Let's say you place 10 bets back to back. Let's say you play, you place 1000 bets. Let's say you place 10,000 bets. You, you, keep, you keep betting one after another, one after another, one after another. What happens in the long run? That is one of the inquiries that we want to have uh, that people, People tend to believe, okay, I lost this time, maybe bad luck, let me try again, let me try again, let me try again. So you want to see mathematically what happens when you do it. What is the end result? Do you end up winning something or do you end up losing? So we, that is one of the things that we will investigate uh, in this course. In fact, uh, in this particular chapter. Okay, so to, to build up all of that, to, to be able to study this in more detail, we want to do a lot of definitions. So the first definition that we are going to do is that of a sample. So what is a sample? So if x1, x2, xn are independent random variables, having a common probability distribution we say that we constitute a sample from that distribution And, and sampling is everywhere. Uh, just now we had elections in a in a few states, so they they do sampling uh, when when the canvassing is going on. They talk to people. They obviously cannot talk to all the people. They cannot talk to all the people who are going to vote. Then there is this exit poll, which is very famous. You talk to people who are coming out of the polling booth, and then you ask them whom they voted for. That is a sample. Okay, uh, so. Uh, the real uh, population is all the people who voted, but sample is all the people uh, one spoke with who are coming out of the uh, electoral booth. Then there is, uh, you could say, you want to compute average height of an Indian male. So you could, you, you can't go around uh, measuring height of 20 crore people. You probably take 100 people in every big city and you compute their height and you take an average of that. That is a sample. So. Uh, so what are the important characteristics? The most important characteristic is that they are independent random variables. So x1, x2, xn are independent random variables and they have a common probability distribution. So uh, we assume that the probability distribution for all the items in a sample is the same and that all these random variables are independent of each other. So if that is the case, then we say that they constitute a sample from 
that particular distribution. So uh, just to put it to uh, just look at it visually, let's say this is the this is the whole population. These are this is the entire population. And you you take you pick some samples from here. So the red dots are the samples. Okay. And then we will define some characteristics. We will define population mean, uh, which is mu, population variance, which is sigma square. And we will define these characteristics for a sample. We will define sample mean and sample. Uh, variance and uh, so th so this is where you want to be really careful with the with the notation so that uh, uh, the sample mean we will always represent by x bar and uh, sample standard deviation we will always will usually uh, write it as s square so so this is where you want to be careful this this is mu population mean population variance is sigma square Sample mean is x bar and sample variance is s square. So what, what is population mean or what is sample mean? So let's say let x1 to x10 be a sample. Of values from this population, then x bar is defined as x1 plus x2 plus xn divided by n. So let's say I take all the uh, students in this class and I total their marks. And I divide it by the number of students in the class. That is how I get the uh, sample means of all the students who are studying probability and statistics. Okay. So, so this will change. The the point to note here is that the value. Of the sample mean x bar is determined by the values of the sample. So if suppose you're trying to compute, let's say, the uh, average height of a uh, uh, adult male, then the value will differ depending upon which sample you take. So what we're trying to say is that x bar itself is a random variable. x bar itself is a random variable. So this is to be contrasted with uh, mu and sigma square. So mu is not a random variable. When you have a population and you have a population mean, then mu is not a random variable. When you have a population variance sigma square, sigma square is not a random variable. These are numbers. These are not random variables. However, the value of the sample mean x bar, this will depend upon what sample you have taken. So if you take this sample, these seven entries, then you will get a different sample mean. If you take these seven values, you'll get a different sample mean. If you get these five values, then you get a different sample mean. So the sample mean x bar will depend upon what values you are picking. What is the value of the random variables x1 to xn? 
Similarly, sample variance also. S squared is also a uh, is also a random variable because it will depend upon what values you are picking, what what sample you are choosing. So, so this is a very important distinction that you need to keep in mind that x bar and s square are themselves random variables, wherein mu and sigma square are numbers. They are not random variables. So x bar, so the value of the sample mean is determined by the value of the random variables in the sample. Hence, x bar itself is a random variable. And if x bar itself is a random variable, then we can compute statistics on x bar. So we can talk about things like uh, e of x bar and variance of x bar. We can talk about these things. We can talk about what is the expected value of the x bar and what is the variance of x bar. Why? Because x bar itself is a random variable. And we'll do the proof later. So uh, proof later. But right now, I'm just stating it without proof. That expected value of x bar turns out to be mu, and expected value of variance of x bar turns out to be sigma square by n. So what is n here? n is the sample size. So just to recap what we have said, we have said there is a whole huge population. Uh, and you want to compute some statistics on the population, you cannot collect data on the whole population. It is too much work. So we take a sample from the population. Now, the sample would differ. Let's say if we talk about election, then uh, depending on which news channel you're talking about, one news channel will go to a particular set of people, another news channel will go to a different set of people. So all the news channels will choose a different sample. So, uh, so, so the x bar, x1 to xn that they choose are different, and hence the the mean that they get, uh, x bar itself is different. So what we are saying is that x bar itself is a random variable. And if it is a random variable, then we can talk about its mean, and we can talk about its variance. So it turns out that mean of x bar is the same as mu, which is the population mean. So this is the population mean. But we get a more interesting result for the variance. The variance of the sample. Variance of the sample is, so this is what sigma square is what? So sigma square is population variance. So what we are saying is that the variance of x bar is variance of the population divided by the size of the sample. So what it means in particular is that variance goes down goes down as sample size increases. When you take bigger and bigger and bigger sample, then the variance of x bar, variance of the sample mean, that keeps going down. And that kind of makes sense. Let's say you're talking about uh, uh, elections in a state like UP, which probably has, I don't know, maybe 10 crore voters are there, if you talk to 10 people only, then you'll get a certain x bar. But it is understandable that the variance will be high. But if you talk to 10,000 people, then it is obvious that you will you will get a lower variance in your in your uh, population in your sample mean. So, in terms of for for random variable, uh, for normal random variable, this is how it looks. So let's say if you were to plot the graph for your all normal random variables. So if suppose uh, you take a sample of size one, okay? And so what we are plotting here is uh, densities of sample mean. From a standard uh, standard normal population n zero one uh, mean is zero, variance is one. So if we were to do that, let's say we take a sample of size one, then 
it will look like this is for n equal to 1. But if you were to take n equal to 2, it will it will look like my drawing is not so good, but let me just try. So it will basically be narrower and higher. This is for n equal to 2. And let's say we do it for n equal to 4. Then n equal to 10. So what we're trying to uh, show here is that as you keep increasing the sample size, as, as you have bigger and bigger sample size, then the density function becomes narrower and narrower. It, it, it comes closer and closer to that. So the distribution becomes closer and closer to the mean value. So the variance decreases. What, what these graphs are essentially showing is that the variance is going down as the value of n is increasing. n is the sample size. So let's 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 look at a smaller example. Let's look at an easier example. In fact, let's look at a discrete example. So, so let's say we take a sample size of sample of size two. Um, let's say the random variable x can take two values. Uh, it can take value one, or it can take value two probability of taking value one is half. So let's say it's a coin. Okay, it's a coin flip. Uh, you say head is one, let's say tail is two. Probability of getting a one is half, probability of getting a tail is two. Okay, so, so, so that is the setup. Now what is, so probability of x equal to one is half, uh, probability of x equal to two is half, okay. So, x can take two values, either one or two. Now, what is mu and what is sigma square? This example. So, what is mu and what is sigma square? Three by two mu. Yeah. And sigma square one by four. So mu is one into one by two plus two into one by two. So it takes value one with probability half and value two with probability half. So this is three by two. How do you compute sigma square? Sigma square is expected value of x minus mu whole square. So it's one minus three by two, which is half. Uh, 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 into 1 by 2 that is 1 by 4. So you get mu and sigma square. So mu is 3 by 2 and sigma square is 1 by 4. So this is the random variable that we are talking about. We have not done any sampling till now. Okay. Now let's say now let's say we take a sample. We, we take a sample. Consider a sample of size two, okay? So you're doing this twice, so you have two values, x1 and x2. Now, what are the possible values that x1 and x2 can take? So what are the possible values that x1 and x2 can take? Both can be one, x1 can be one, x2 to be two. You're taking a sample of size two. It's possible that both the values in the sample are equal to one. One is one, the first is one, second is two. This is one, this is two, or both are equal to two. These are the possibilities. Yeah, and what is the probability for each of these events? So this is half into half, one by four, all are one by four. Yeah, when you take a sample of size two, in this population, each, each value could be either one or two. So it's possible that both of them are equal to one. That probability is one by four. It's possible that x1 is 1, x2 is 2. This probability is 1 by 4. It's possible that x1 is 2 and x2 is 1. 
This probability is 1 by 4. And it's possible that both of them are 2 and the probability is 1 by 4. Now, what is what is x bar? What is x bar? We said that x bar is a random variable. Yeah, somebody was speaking. Different for all four values. Let's say it louder. Uh, different for all the four values. Yes. So x bar itself is a random variable. So it is a random variable whose value is dependent. On the values of x1 and x2, right? So x bar can take what values? So if you look at this, x bar in this example is what? So if we can we can write it here actually it's better. Uh, what is x bar here? So x bar here is one plus one by two, which is one. X bar here is 1 plus 2 by 2, which is 1.5. Here it is 2 plus 1 by 2, it is 1.5. Here it's 2 plus 2 by 2, which is 2. So X bar is taking these four values. It is taking value 1 with probability 1 by 4. It's taking value 1.5 with probability half. And it is taking value 2 with probability 1 by 4. So these are the values and probabilities for x bar. It's taking value 1 with 1 by 4, 1.5 with probability half, and 2 with probability 1 by 4. So now we can ask the question, what is the expected value of x bar? So what is the expected value of x bar? Expected value of x bar then is 1 into 1 by 4, plus 1.5 into 1 by 2, plus 2 into 1 by 4. And when we do this, we get 3 by 2. So this is just to verify what we said earlier that expected value of x bar is the same as mu. So this is the same as mu, which is the population mu. Any questions up to here? Um, sir, I just wanted to confirm that the two values that we are uh, 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 racking up uh, one or two, uh, was that the set of all possibilities? Uh, can you please repeat? Uh, are you talking about this? This page? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, the previous space, uh, the two values one or two that we are talking about tackling of over here. Uh, yes, sir. Is it the set of all the possibilities? Yes, this is the set of all the possibilities for x. Uh, okay, okay, sir. Okay, so so think of it like this that let's say in, in your class, uh, I ask every student to, to choose the number, and every student chooses either one or two with equal probabilities. So all of you toss a coin and if you get a head you choose one if you get a tail you choose two and then out of the whole class uh, right now how many people are there so right now there are 200 oh it's interesting there are exactly two to two people in the class and this is actually two to two okay so out of 222 people i choose two people randomly so that's what we are doing here We're choosing a sample of size two so out of 222 people we choose two people at random, okay? So let's say Tarang and uh, Bhavya, and then we ask, what did you choose? Now, it's possible that both of them chose one one, uh, possible that Tarang chose one and Bhavya chose two, or Tarang chose two and Bhavya chose one, or both of them selected two. So these are four possibilities. Probability of each one of them is one by four. Now, in these two possibilities, the answer is the same. Answer for X bar is the same. Whether Taran chooses one and Bhave chooses two, or whether Taran chooses two and Bhave chooses one, in both the cases, the, the mean is 
1.5. X bar is 1.5. So we combine these two. So we say that when X bar is 1.5 with probability half, it's 1 with probability 1 by 4, and it's 2 with probability 1 by 4. And so X bar itself is a random variable. So the, what we are saying in this slide is that X bar itself is a random variable. It can take these three possible values with three different probabilities, three distinct probabilities. So we can compute expected value of X bar. We are treating X bar as a random variable. So we can compute its expected value. So we get this number and it turns out to be the same as the expected value of the population. That is what we have said here. Can you please reshare your screen? Because from my end, it's stuck on the previous one. Yes, sir. In my screen, also, it's screen. So you can't see this hello written? You're not able to see hello on the screen? Can't. Can't see. The screen is free for us. Yes, sir. It is. Oh. Okay. Thanks for pointing it out. Um, let me try again. So in future also it may happen. Uh, WebEx is a very reliable software and it happens. So when it happens, you let me know as soon as possible so that it's minimum time. Are you able to now see this hello written in red? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir? Yeah? Sir, as we have talked about uh, expectation and variance of X bar, uh, we can also talk about expectation and variance of S square. That is sample mean and sample variance. Yeah, we could do that. The sample variance is also uh, means random variable. Of course, sample variance is also a random variable because it is a function of the sample that we have chosen. Okay, sir. Right. Yeah. So, so this example is not complete. We are still doing this example, but what you have said, said is valid and uh, it, it will come in future. Uh, okay. So what we did till now is that we computed the expected value of X bar and we saw that it is equal to the expected value of the population, which is 1.5. Now, we want to also verify what is the variance of X bar. Ouch. Uh, what is the variance of X bar? So variance of X bar, we know X bar is a random variable. So its mean is 1.5 and we know the probability function, we can compute its variance. So its expected value of uh, X bar minus mu uh, whole square. So it's 1 minus 1.5 whole square into 1 by 4 plus 1.5 minus 1.5 whole square into 1 by 2 plus 2 minus 1.5 whole square into 1 by 4. Yeah. And, and this is 0. This is 1 by 4 to 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 into 1 by 4. So that is 1 by 8. And this turns out to be equal to uh, basically 1 by 4 divided by 2. And what is 1 by 4? 1 by 4 is sigma square. So this is equal to sigma square by n is variance of x bar. So this is what we stated earlier. That variance of x bar turns out to be sigma square by n. N in this example is 2. So sigma square was 1 yes, by 4. Uh, yeah. The screen froze again for, yes, for my end. Uh, the screen froze again. Yes, sir. So is it for everybody? Uh, like nobody can see that? Sir, I think, Sorry. sir, could you uh, unlock the meet so that we can like try to rejoin so that I think then the yes, sir. issue can like resolve. Yes, Let's try that. I've unlocked. 
But is there anybody who can see it or is it frozen for everybody? That's what I want to know. No, sir, we can see it perfectly. No, sir, it's perfectly visible. You, you can see this uh, X in red and in a circle. You can see it right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah, so please uh, uh, disconnect and rejoin. Um, yeah, so what, what we are showing here, uh, we, we computed variance of X bar. It turns out to be 1 by 8. So it's essentially 1 by 4 by 2. And what is 1 by 4? 1 by 4 is sigma square. We computed that earlier. So what we have what we have shown here, this is not a proof, by the way. This is just to show, just to verify that variance of x bar is equal to sigma squared by n. So if you were to draw it, uh, so let's say population probability mass function. It can it takes two values, one and two. And with probability half. So when as far as the population is concerned, it takes two values. It takes value one or it takes value two uh, with probability half each. Uh, but when you talk about probability mass function. Of sample mean, then it can take three values. Sample mean can take three values. It can take value one uh, with probability one by four. It can take value one point five with probability half, or it can take value two with again probability one by four. These are three values it can take. Okay. So any any questions till now? Any questions up to this point? No. Okay, so what I want you to do is uh, try it out for a sample of size 3. So, to work this out, for a sample of size 3, same example, do it for sample of size 3. For sample of size 3, what you need to show is that expected value of x is the same as mu which is 3 by 2, and you need to show that variance of x, 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 x bar, sorry, expected value of x bar, uh, and variance of x bar will be equal to sigma squared by 3, which is uh, 1 by 12. So try it out for sample of size 3. Okay. What I'm going to do is break you up into breakout sessions. Uh, so that you can talk to each other. Wow, this is a big class. Let's say I break you into Yeah, each session will have four to five people. Take support from each other, discuss with each other. Uh, you can set up group leader who will share the results when you come back to the main meeting. Before I do that, is there any question about what you need to do? Are you clear what you need to do? Yes. Okay, great.
So anybody, did anybody try it out? Did anybody get the answer? Could you verify that expected value of X bar is indeed uh, 3 by 2 and variance of X bar is indeed sigma square by 3, which is 1 by 12? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you compute X bar? By sum and by divide by 3. So, what are the possible values? 8 possible values. 1, 2, 4 by 3, and 5 by 3. Okay. So, the possible values of X bar are. One, four by three, five by three, and two. Okay. And what are the probabilities? One by eight. Five, three by three, three, by, by, three by eight. One by. And when you do this computation, then you get expected value of x bar to be three by, three by two. two. Mm -hmm. And now that you have the probability distribution. You can also compute its variance. Similarly, you can compute variance of x bar. So that will be uh, 1 by 2 square into 1 by 8 plus 4 by 3 minus 3 by 2. So that is 1, six. one by 6 square into 3 by 8 plus 1 by 6 square into 3 by 8 plus 1 by 2 square into 1 by 8. And you're saying that this turns out to be equal to 1 by 12, which is sigma square by 3. Yeah? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, hello? Yeah? Sir, I have a doubt. Uh... Let's say we take a sample of uh, 1, 1, 1 of size equals to 3. So the x bar is coming out to be 3 by 2, not just 3 by 3. If you take a sample of, let me write it in a new page. What you're saying is you're taking x1, x2, x3, and x1 is 1, x2 is 1, x3 is 1. Is what you're saying? Yeah, right. And how do you compute the x bar? Like my mind is coming out to me. So x bar is the summation of x i by n. So it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 3 is 1. Okay, okay. I must have understood. Sorry, sir. Yeah, so here n is 3. In the previous example, n was 2 because we took a sample of size 2. In this example, we are taking a sample of size 3. So n is 3, so we divide by 3, so we get uh, we get 1 as the x bar. Any other questions about this example? Okay, so I wanted to try out one more exercise. So, um, so this is another exercise for you to completely understand or rather completely uh, test your understanding of what we have done. So in the previous example that we saw, we said that the probabilities are equal. You know, uh, x1 
and x2 can both take values 1 or 2 with equal probabilities. Now we are saying that the probabilities need not be equal. So let's say uh, you take a sample of size 2 from a population. In the population, x can take value 1 with probability 0 0.7 and x can take value 2 with probability 0 0.3. Okay. So given all this, what you need to do is you need to compute e of x and uh, let me just write it down more simply compute mu and sigma square uh, then you need to find out what are the possible values of x bar what are the probabilities for these values of x bar so x bar is a random variable so it can take certain values and which with each of these values there is a certain probability assigned to it so what are those probabilities for all the possible values that x bar can take and then uh, you compute e of x bar and variance of x bar Okay, and what you want to verify is whether e of x bar is coming out to be the same as mu and whether variance of x bar is coming out to be sigma square by n. That is what you want to verify. Okay. Any any doubts about the statement of the exercise? What do you need to do? So starting the breakout sessions, uh, try it out with each other and you come back and then you share.
Hi, um, welcome back from the breakout sessions. Uh, so the problem was that uh, there's a random variable x which takes two values. It takes value one with probability 0 0.7 and it takes value two with probability 0 0.3. So you can think of it like being a biased coin. So the probability of head is 0 0.7, probability of tail is 0 0.3. If you get a heads, then you then you choose assign number one to it, and if you get a tail, you assign number two to it. So the first part is compute mu and sigma square. So what will be mu and sigma square? One point three and point twenty one. Yeah. So you compute mu as one into zero point seven uh, plus two into zero point three. So that is zero point seven plus zero. 0.6 which is 1.3 and sigma square is 1 minus 1.3 whole square into 0 0.7 plus 2 minus 1.3 whole square into 0 0.3 so that is 0 0.09 into 0 0.7 plus uh, 0 0.49 into 0 0.3 so that is 0. Yeah, I'll just write down the final answer, 0 0.21. So that is mu and sigma square. Now, what are the possible values of x bar? So what are the possible values that x bar can take? And what are their probabilities? 1, 1.5 and 2. Yeah, so x bar is the same as before. Or the possible values of x bar is the same as before. It can be 1. If both are 1, it can be 1.5, it can be 2. What is the probability that x bar is equal to 1? When will x bar be equal to 1? 0.14. Point 14. Right. 0.49. Yeah, so one thing I, I just want to tell you, it, you never call it 49. Okay, you don't say 0. 0.49, you say 0. 0.49. After the decimal, you, you, don't, uh, you don't say it like it is before the decimal. Yeah, so you get a value one with, when both of them are equal to one, so 0 0.7 into 0 0.7, which is 0 0.49. When do you get 1.5? 0.42. Yeah, so it is 0 0.7 into 0 0.3 into two, so it is 0 0.42, and you get a two when both of them are equal to two. This is equal to? 0. 0.09 okay so now you want to compute what now you want to compute its expected value of x bar and variance of x bar so expected value of x bar is 1 into 0.49 plus 1.5 into 0 0.42 plus 2 into 0 0.09 and it turns out to be equal to 1.3 Variance of x bar is uh, 1 minus 1.5 whole square into 0 0.49 plus 1.5 minus 1.5 whole square into 0 0.42 plus 2 minus 1.5 whole square into 0 0.09. This requires some more work, but this turns out to be 0. Point. Anybody got the answer for this? 0 0.105. Yeah. And this is equal to 0 0.21 by 2. So this is sigma square by 2. Sir? Yeah? Sir, in the, in the variance of x bar, uh, there should be 1 minus 1.3 instead of 1 minus 1.5. Yes. Um, yeah, I think I made a mistake in writing. Should be 1.3 everywhere. Thanks for being awake. So 1 minus 1.3, 1 minus 1.3, 2 minus 1.3. Yeah, so 1 minus 1.3 whole square, 1.5 minus 1.3 whole square, and 2 minus 1.3 whole square. Why? Because expected value is 1.3. We're talking about um, expected value of x bar. Yeah, thanks for pointing it out. Okay, so. Uh, 
so this completes this example i'll just take a few more minutes and complete the proof and then we will end the lecture for today so the proof is pretty straightforward uh, so what is x bar x bar is x1 plus x2 plus xn by n the expected value of x bar is what it is expected value of this whole thing x1 plus x2 plus xn by n and uh, you know this relation if if you have expected value of ax plus b where a and b are constant what is this equal to a into expectation of x plus b yes a into expectation of x plus b so so there is this linearity of expectation so if you apply that then you get 1 by n multiplied with expectation of x1 plus expectation of x2 plus expectation of xn each of these is equal to mu so this is mu this is mu this is mu so you get 1 by n into n into mu is equal to mu so you get that expected value of x bar is equal to mu okay and then similarly we will now show for variance so uh, the proof for variance is, is also straightforward so uh, what is variance of ax plus b yes a square yes so it is a square into uh, you know complicate into variance of x so b has no role to play so uh, in, in in this so when we want to compute variance of x bar that is variance of x1 plus x2 plus xn by n now the point here is they are independent xi are independent this is important we said that in the beginning uh, when you we were defining the over here we said that here x1 to xn are independent random variables so we said that they are independent so xi are independent so what does this mean that means that we can use we can write it as variance of x1 by n plus variance of x2 by n plus variance of xn by n so 1 by n square comes out 1 by n square variance of x1 plus 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 variance of xn now each of these is equal to uh, sigma square so this becomes 1 by n square into n into sigma square so we get it to be equal to sigma square by n so this completes the proof for for, for the theorem that we had verified using previous examples okay so this completes today's lecture uh, we will have a tutorial with very simple problems the tutorial is on thursdays and oh, the tutorial is on thursdays but the next lecture is on friday so we'll have a short tutorial uh, just to try out some problems and get a hang of the thing and from next week onwards it will become slightly more more involved but uh, my my invitation is to attend all the tutorials and all the lectures uh, that will that is a real practice okay uh, it, yeah okay thank you guys bye bye so do we have a lecture on friday as like we are moving to the campus on those days so it won't be possible for all of us to attend the lecture at that time we'll so see. i i'm not aware of this part i have been told that we have lectures if you want to cancel it you need to talk to dean academics the information that i have is that from 18 april we have offline lectures and till 18 april we have online lectures and we have not received any notification that says that there is any particular holiday okay okay so we will have the lecture on uh, on friday unless there is a notification uh, from from dean academics to that effect <laughs> Okay guys, bye-bye.